I have got to be very, very quick with this episode of The Movie Wrapper because, well, quite frankly, I have a date with a sadistic clown and if I don't turn up to that date, quite frankly, he's going to chisel my face off and use it as a mask, maybe, I don't know. Uh, if you get the joke, then I'm sure you know that that's a little reference to the Terrifier movie. If not, well... It's a terrifying movie, okay? That's what I'm seeing. Terrify 3. It's going to be reviewed in next week's episode of the movie wrap-up, okay? Um, also, as well, there might be another clown movie that I'm going to be reviewing in next week's episode as well of the movie wrap-up. But uh, I'll talk about that in next week's episode. Anyway, before I uh, have my date with a sadistic serial killer clown, let's uh, do this week's episode of the movie wrap-up. Roll them titles. You're watching Steve's Movie Wrap-Up, episode 48, right here on my YouTube channel, Steve Official. The first movie we'll be reviewing in this episode is Azrael. Starting off this week's Movie Wrap-Up episode with uh, the movie Azrael, which is a horror movie, by the way, uh, which I gave three stars over on Letterboxd. In a world where no one speaks, a devout female hunts down a young woman who has escaped her imprisonment. Recaptured by its ruthless leaders, Azrael is due to be sacrificed to pacify an ancient evil deep within the surrounding wilderness. Uh, so Azrael is a movie which does star Samara Weaving, who at this point is one of those actresses who I would like to class as a modern horror screen queen and I'm so glad that she has done this movie and it has been released in time for spooky season I will give it that there have been a few movies that we have seen or witnessed in the past couple of years where the film has no dialogue to it at all and surprisingly Azrael follows this exact formula. I went in completely blind with this movie, so I had no idea that this film would have hardly any dialogue in it at all. Do we get to hear Samara Weaving scream in this movie? Sadly, we don't, but there are times where her character is acting as if she does want to scream, but sadly is unable to. Uh, going back to the dialogue... Uh, dialogue dialogueless uh, aspect to this film. This is what I enjoy most about them. I was a huge fan of the movie No One Will Save You, uh, which came out last year on Disney+. Plus. And then earlier this year, when the animated movie Robot Dreams was released, once again, another dialogueless uh, movie I did enjoy. And Azrael was no different. It kept me intrigued. Um... Uh, it kept me intrigued throughout the film. It also did keep me engaged with the film. And it does, in some way, make you appreciate the music scoring and the sound design even more within the film. Samara Weaving is the only cast member in this film that I did recognise. However, I did think that all the other cast members did a great job in the roles that they played in the movie. Also, you have got to love movies where Samara Weaving's face is just covered in blood. Um... It is almost becoming its own kind of cinematic universe at this point. Uh, I thought the design of the creatures we see in this film were well done and also looked rather creepy and scary. While there are some gnarly kills in this and some good use, uh, good use of blood and gore, I did also appreciate some of the action sequences that we do get in the film. Uh, that also helped to keep the pace going for this film. It does have a short running time as the film does clock in at 1 hour 25 minutes, so just slightly under 90 minutes, which is fine. Uh, for film fans out there looking for a short horror film to watch while they take a break from what they are doing etc I wouldn't just class this film as a horror movie as while there are some elements of horror in here uh, to appreciate but there are also some thrilling moments in here that one would find maybe in a thriller movie and with those action sequences I would also class this as an action movie too from my understanding, I believe that this movie will be getting released on the horror streaming service Shudder at some point in October 2024. But I have managed to watch this because, bizarrely, this movie is available to buy and rent on digital platforms here in the UK. But is this a movie that I would happily watch again? I do think so, yes. And is this a movie that maybe I will end up buying and keeping on digital in the near future? Yeah, I think so, as once again, I really did enjoy this movie a lot, and I think I would happily revisit this one again in the near future. 
The Beast Within. So The Beast Within, I gave one star over on Letterboxd. Uh, Ten-year-old Willow follows her parents on one of her secret late-night treks to the heart of an ancient forest after witnessing her father undergo a terrible transformation. She too becomes uh, ensnared by the dark ancestral secret that they've so desperately tried to conceal. The Beast Within is a movie that stars Kit Harrington, who Game of Thrones fans uh, will recognise as a character of John snow in the series but he is the only star that you will recognize in this film and for me sadly his performance in this film didn't save this film at all uh this is a film i have kept meaning to watch and given the fact that we are now in spooky season i thought this would be a good watch but turns out i was completely wrong uh, i don't think there have has been too many werewolf horror movies that i have really enjoyed before and i think it's safe to say that i can add this one to the list as well but saying this though um i don't even think you could class this too much as a horror movie you don't really see a lot of the werewolf that appears in the film uh, the dark scenes are really dark as well and despite me watching this on my tv during broad daylight hours with my curtains closed i still couldn't work out what was going on in those dark scenes the acting seemed rather off and rather non-believable the only actress who actually put in the effort in this movie was a little girl actress. I thought she was the best performer out of all of the ca other cast members in the film. Also, this film was just really boring. It didn't feel like a horror at all, as mentioned before. It more felt like a family drama which they disguised as a horror movie, but there was hardly anything horrifying about this movie. I think the only thing that I can say that was rather decent about the movie, which is worth the one star rating, is... First of all, the little girl actress's performance in this movie, as mentioned, was the only believable one out of all the other characters. And also the music scoring did make it feel rather unsettled and creepy at times. Also, I think they tried to make this film feel like it was a classic film rather than a film that was released in 2024, uh, which for me did work. Uh, is this a film that I would recommend horror fans to watch? Definitely not, I'm afraid. I'll save you the one hour and 38 minute running time by saying don't see this film. Even if you are a Kit Harrington fan, unless you want to see him naked, there are some scenes of him nude in this movie. And is this a movie that I would rewatch again? Sadly not, based on my negative response to the film. I definitely won't be seeing this one again. But if you do want to check out The Beast Within for yourselves, though, then feel free to, as it's available to buy and rent on digital platforms. Sorry, Charlie. So, sorry, Charlie, I gave two and a half stars over on Letterboxd. Uh, a remote helpline volunteer is targeted by a stranger who lures women from their homes with a recording of a crying baby. Sorry, Charlie is a movie that I recently discovered over on Amazon Prime Video here in the UK. Not sure uh, where it is streaming in other parts of the world, but I will be honest, at first I was rather concerned because this film is rather short, clocking in at just 75 minutes slash one hour and 15 minutes but it turns out to be honest sometimes shorter is better and this movie does prove that uh this does have some rather suspenseful scenes in it which i did enjoy you also have this story which interestingly is based on a true story and we follow the story of a woman who is pregnant expecting a baby um, and works remotely from home and she is being targeted by this stranger who lures women away from their homes with the sound of a crying baby. It does even have some scientific facts as well to begin the movie with. Uh, this does feel like a low budget movie and it does have the sense that this movie was made on a low budget but I will say that I did still enjoy this one and I do think this is one that people should check out during the spooky season. The main actress in this, Kathleen Kenny, uh, is a standout performer in here i really enjoyed their performance in this and i hope that uh, this review gives you the courage to check this one out uh, for yourselves so sorry charlie is now streaming here in the uk on the streaming service amazon prime video the diary next movie that i have seen this week is the diary which i gave two stars over on letterbox uh, so olga discovers the unfinished diary of a notorious killer and becomes captivated by its dark secrets as she delves deeper she uncovers a mysterious connection between them putting her life and the lives of those around her in grave danger so the diary is a movie that i have stumbled upon on amazon prime video here in the uk 
And I do, from my understanding, believe it is streaming on Prime Video around the rest of the world too. But this one was quietly added onto the streaming platform as I had no idea about this one coming out. There was no advertisements to say this was being released. And this didn't even pop up on the coming soon section that they have on the Prime Video app. Uh, but that being said though, what did I think of the diary? I would have thought the diary would have kept things quite tense and at times rather suspenseful too but it didn't it didn't like to keep things under wraps for too long revealing a lot of the story and not holding too many things back to flesh out the movie so they revealed a lot of this stuff quite early on in the film i will be honest i do believe that this is a, a spanish movie which has been dubbed in english so there is that but i didn't have a problem with that at all I did think the uh, I did think that the actors and actresses involved in this were decent, and you know what? Even the English dubbed voices they fit in with the cast really well too. Is this a movie that I would recommend? Well, if you are looking for a horror movie to watch that has a running time of around. 90 minutes then sure i would say give this a go but just a fair warning that the tension does start to go away as the more deeper you go into this movie which is a shame but the diary is now streaming over on amazon prime video globally Knox goes away also known as the killer's memory so Knox goes away aka the killer's memory uh i gave three stars over on letterbox uh so a contract killer after being diagnosed with a fast moving form of dementia is presented with the opportunity to redeem himself by saving the life of his estranged adult son but to do so he must race against the police closing in on him as well as the ticking clock of his own rapidly deteriorating mind i'm not gonna lie but as soon as i saw this pop up on amazon prime video i just had to give this movie a watch especially as this stars michael keaton and al pacino straight away you know this movie is going to be good if it does star michael keaton i believed so anyways similar to the diary that i reviewed i wasn't expecting to see this on amazon prime video as again there was no announcements that this was coming nor did i see this on the coming soon section um on the prime video app so it was like they quietly dropped this on the streaming service but what did i think of Knox goes away or as according to prime video it's also called the killer's memory well i rather enjoyed this one i thought this movie uh, i thought the movie itself was well written as mentioned before it's well cast with stars michael keaton and al pacino being in the film and also i think the movie does at times become quite unpredictable which is very nice to see the film i would also say is rather well acted out especially with the other supporting cast members in this film too the movie itself does have a running time of around one hour and 54 minutes and i would say that this film did keep me engaged throughout and rather intrigued as to what happens next to the characters involved in the movie is this a movie that i would recommend people to watch I do think so, um, because at times it will pull on the heartstrings a little, especially with Keaton's character as well. And is this a movie that I could see myself coming back to and revisiting again or rewatching again? Yeah, I do think so. Uh, so if you'd like to see Knox Goes Away, a.k.a. The Killer's Memory, then you can find it on the streaming service, Amazon Prime Video, globally. Double Blind. The next movie that I have seen this week is Double Blind, which I gave two and a half stars over on Letterboxd. After an experimental drug trial goes awry, uh, the test subjects face a terrifying side effect. If you fall asleep, you die. Trapped in an isolated facility, panic ensues as they try to escape and somehow stay awake. I'll be honest here, I did think this was a somewhat decent movie. It was another one of those movies where it seemed as though it quietly dropped on Prime Video without being put on the coming soon section. But sometimes it's nice for this to happen. It gives me something new to watch. Something I wasn't expecting to have on the watch list, both on Prime Video and on my watch list over on Letterboxd as well. I thought the cast members did a decent job with the characters they played in this movie. Unfortunately, though, there was no cast members in here that I did recognise. I do think this was a low-budget horror movie from an independent Irish movie studio. There was some decent cinematography in here, which did take me by surprise a little. 
The story and premise itself did give me the interest and intrigue to give this film a watch. Double Blind does have the running time of 90 minutes slash 1 hour and 30 minutes, so it isn't too long of a horror movie. I will say Double Blind did also keep me engaged and intrigued to know what will happen next. Uh, there was some good use of fake blood in here when uh, some of the characters get killed, so I will also give the movie credit for that as well. Double Blind is a movie that I would recommend for people to watch during the spooky season. It does have a decent enough premise to keep you intrigued throughout the 90 minute running time. Some people will enjoy this gem, while others may not like this movie. Double Blind is available to stream over on Amazon Prime Video here in the UK. Killer Heat. And the final movie that I have seen this past week is Killer Heat, uh, which I did give two stars over on Letterboxd. An, uh, an expat PI is hired to investigate a suspicious death in Crete, Greece, where jealousies run deep amongst the victim's powerful family. Killer Heat is one of those movies which I thought I was going to enjoy, given that it is a thriller movie, but for me this sadly didn't work at all. I did find it rather bland and boring at times. I didn't really stay well engaged with the movie at all. I kind of felt as though at times this film was a tad predictable. And also that being said, didn't bring anything fresh, new or original to the table, which was a bummer. Richard Madden, Joseph Gordon-Levitt and Shailene Woodley will all star in this movie and I'll be honest, the standout performer in here is Joseph Gordon-Levitt who plays Nick Bally uh, in the film. There was some bits of dialogue here and there in the film that I did at times snigger at as well but I do feel as though this could have been more interesting if it did something that made it stand out from other detected thrillers that we have all seen in the past before. I will say that I do appreciate the location where this film is set as well, Crete, Greece, uh, because I do feel as though I can appreciate the movie for the location shots throughout the movie, uh, used throughout the movie. It does have a running time of 1 hour and 37 minutes. I do feel as though this movie did feel like it's running time or even longer than it's running time, which is unfortunate. Is this a movie that you will see me watch again? I don't think so sadly, but if you're looking for a crime or thriller movie to watch, even if it is just the ones that you see this, then I would say check out Killer Heat. Uh, if you are wondering where Killer Heat is, then you can watch it now over on Amazon Prime Video as it is available to stream over there. I'm telling you now, I feel as though next week's episode of the movie wrap up video is going to be so, so good because... Admittedly, I'm going to be seeing Terrifier 3, um, which I feel as though is going to be good. Transformers 1 is going to be good, I feel, because I've seen nothing but good praise about that film. Joker for Leia Do. Ugh, I guess. We'll see. I've not really heard many good things about it, but you'll get my thoughts on that in next week's episode of the movie wrap-up. Um, and also as well, I'm planning to see Smile 2. Smile 2, I've heard nothing but good stuff about that. And maybe by the end of the week, maybe the last movie that I might review in next week's movie wrap-up video will be um, The Wild Robot, which again, I've heard nothing but really, really good stuff about that. I may also end up reviewing a couple of movies that are available on streaming as well and stuff like that. So I will be talking about some of those movies as well in next week's episode of the Movie Wrap Up. But I do feel as though there's going to be a couple of movies in that list that I've kind of just listed off for you guys. Which I feel as though is going to have a very high star rating. Like, I don't know. We could be looking at four star, four and a half, maybe even a five star rated movie or a couple of five star rated movies. Who knows? We'll see what happens. But listen, guys, thank you for watching this week's episode of the movie wrap up. OK, hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a like. Leave a comment in the comment section down below. As always, let me know in the comment section what your movies, uh, what's 
movies have you been seeing this past week whether it's on streaming whether it's in cinemas whether it's old whether it's new feel free to let me know in the comment section down below and also as well let me know in the comment section down below whether you yourself have have seen terrify three and let me know how gory it is honestly i i, I will know i will know by the time this video goes out how gory it was but i just want to get your reactions to that movie as well in the comment section uh, down below um and as always if you are new around here and you like what you see then feel free to hit that subscribe button down below as well to become a steve -O. your next youtube video will be out tomorrow at 4 p.m uh, uk time which will be the 14th of october 2024 uh, and of course it will be my next episode of Steve's weekly vlog. Looking forward to getting that video up for you guys to see. Um, anyway, from me though for now is goodbye. Thank you for watching and I will see you guys again in my next YouTube video.